All right, let's get started with today's demo. First, I'm going to walk us through three different personas and each of their view of the data collected by DAX. First, we'll have the desktop assistant and the view of the employee's device and application data. Then we'll be walking through a service desk agent's view of DEX data in closing an incident. And then we'll have the central IT view of all of an organization's devices and application performance that we're tracking with DEX. Starting here with desktop assistant, this is the employee view of the data being collected by DEX. If we click on device health, we can see the application data, what's running currently on my computer when I last restarted. And if we go to network test, we can see where I'm connected to here in San Francisco and what my connectivity level is. Looks like we're in a good place for today's presentation. Finally, if I have questions, I can leverage the link to Employee Center to go to the service portal for my company, or I can leverage our integration with Virtual Agent. Here is also where I would be able to see the push notifications and alerts. I'm currently logged in as Martin Rodriguez, and he's an employee who has noticed that his laptop is currently running slowly. So he goes to his virtual agent integration and tells virtual agent what's going on. He uses natural language. It's able to identify the right topic and offers to do some quick troubleshooting. This interaction is also the Gen AI solution now assist version of virtual agent that we're using. Here, virtual agent goes back to the service cloud and checks the data being collected by DEX. It is able to identify that Martin's device is currently running low on disk space and offers a knowledge base article for him to use. However, that didn't help Martin, so Virtual Agent offers to run some additional checks. Again, it's going to go back to the ServiceNow cloud and look what else is going on with Martin's device and applications. Here, we're able to see all of the applications running on his device and identify a few that are consuming most of his available memory. Again, Virtual Agent offers a knowledge article to kind of self-service and resolve this issue on his own, but that's not what Martin needed. Virtual Agent is going to do a final check. It's checked the device itself, the application's running on his device. Now it's gonna check the behaviors the last time he rebooted his computer. And as we can see, it's been over a month since Martin restarted his computer. Now he knows he should do this, but that's not what he thinks is going to resolve his issue. So he needs someone to look into it. So now Virtual Agent's gonna connect him to a live agent. So with that, we're going to move on to Amelia, and she's a live agent logged into her service operations workspace where all of the incidents that she's working on are all in one space. Here we can see under the status, we have this chat, and once she accepts it, we can see all of the conversation that Martin just had with virtual agent. We're also able to leverage this chat summarized by analysis. So she doesn't have to go through the back and forth that we just witnessed and is able to just really use these bullet points to say, okay, they've already done the standard steps to get his laptop up and running. Doesn't seem to be working. So she'll create an incident to start to work with him. As you can see, when she, by clicking create incident, we're able to bring over the summary that was created of the chat originally. And also she can leverage now assist to create just bulleted uh, summary of the actions that are already have been taken and any other pertinent information with this incident. Moving on from the overview, she can go to the investigation tab. Now this tab is the summary of the data that's being collected by DEX and can be leveraged by the service desk agent. What she sees here is that on Martin's device, we have critical alerts in memory utilization, disk utilization, and CPU utilization. So it's really not surprising that his laptop is operating slowly if so many metrics that we're following are in critical status. When she then looks to see which applications are running, we can see that Chrome is actually consuming the majority of the CPU and memory from what's running on his device currently. And so she can just select it 
right here, choose end process and a new playbook will now be available to her. So we'll go to the playbook icon here on the right. And this is really where she's able to leverage a standardized playbook on how to resolve issues. And this is to ensure that the help desk, no matter which BU they're supporting or where they're geographically located, every help desk is resolving incidents or certain issues in the same standardized manner. So the instructions here, which can be adjusted to match uh, whatever the specific issue is for your organization, the, the specific step here is to get approval from Martin so she can just reach out to him here and say, please confirm approval to anti-CPU usage roam process. Send that note out to him, get his approval, and then just end it right here from her workspace. She doesn't have to switch through tools and we'll see that the task was completed and Chrome should have been ended. And yes, in fact, we can see that the metrics that we were tracking are back inside standard parameters and Chrome is no longer running on Martin's computer. And so with that, she can resolve the incident. She can check back in with Martin, make sure that he's also seeing better performance and resolve the incident by saying ended high CPU usage Chrome process. And that will be sent to Martin. Now, finally, we'll switch to the central IT perspective of data. So now I'm logged in as Kellen and he is our central IT operator. He's responsible for the entire organization's devices and application performance. So from the landing page here, we can see all of the active alerts, any impacted users, our active users and active devices that we're tracking. We can also see where these are geographically located. And because it's ServiceNow, we can drill down more and more granularly into the data, but we're going to stay up on this high level for today's demo. So digital experience score, is an overall view, including the device experience and application experience. We can look at this deck score on a weekly basis and how it changes or on a monthly basis. And we can look at the changes geographically in case you roll out new applications in one region and that may or may not impact performance. This DEX score is composed of the device score. So here is the device performance. And again, because it's ServiceNow, we can keep drilling down into what is composing these scores for this particular device type, Mac OS. We have our device health metric coming from what we're tracking with DEX. We have our user sentiment coming from surveys that users have provided. And we have our service experience score that's coming from the service desk itself. All of these over 5,000 incidents associated with this type of device. And all of these are then combined into the device score and can be weighted uh, appropriately to adjust to whatever your organization wants to emphasize. So this was for the device score. Then if we had the application score, similarly, we're able to see the different applications, what their performance is, and continue to drill down into, again, the DEX metrics, the user sentiment, and the service score. Then starting back at the top, when we go on the left icon to the insights, these are a set of out-of-the-box reports in areas that our customers have asked for more detail. So out of the box, we have our battery health insight, our system compliance, our system performance report, and a system uptime. If we started with system battery health, if I had this sorted by full capacity, we can see it's a range. But if we're in a device refresh cycle and we want to just see the devices that are, have poor battery health, then I can come here and just look at Jim's device and get a good overview into the operation of his device specifically. So from the overview tab here, we can see exactly the device itself, what model and operating system it's running and where it's located. 
we can see all the metrics that we're tracking here as well as any pending system updates that might be in the background. Under system compliance, we can see its compliance rating and any non-compliant applications or policy metric. We can dive into the alerts, incidents, um, battery status, and hardware associated with this device. We can also see all the applications that we're currently tracking for this device. Similarly to what we saw on Desktop Assistant, we could see all the applications running on my device. And then in the Service Desk Investigation tab, we can see the top applications running here we can see the usage metrics and applications running on this device. We can also get deeper insight into the application performance of installed apps for a set amount of time, both memory and CPU usage, as well as app performance. And then SaaS applications. We can again see the metrics that we're tracking. Under device metrics, we can see its performance over time whether it's memory usage, CPU usage, or disk usage, we can see the battery percentage to see if this is an issue that's recent or something that's um, ongoing. And we can see the total energy consumption, as well as our Wi-Fi transmit and receive rates. And then again, new to DEX with the Q1 release, we have our application network experience. So we have our connection details. What is the network that we're connected to? We have app connection stabilities. If we choose a SaaS application, we can see that network latency, packet loss, and network jitter that we mentioned earlier. We can also see the app connection path as well as the live application hops. Now moving on to the rest of the data that we can see on the application device health landing page. We can see all of the users that we're tracking, any alerts that they're experiencing and which device they're on as well as the location they're located. We can also search by location as well as specific user. On applications, we can dive into the application performance. For this SaaS application overview, we can see active alerts and incidents, impacted users. We can also see the metrics that we're tracking, both most recently over the last two hours are up to 30 days. And then for SaaS applications, we can also see trends so that we can identify if there's anything moving in a direction that we're surprised at, you know, ideally Mean time to resolution would be stable or trend downward. Additionally, for installed applications, we can see that same overview as well as the installed application performance metrics that we're tracking. In this case, as you can see, we also are tracking the app version specifically. So if we wanted to investigate why 5.14.7 seems to be causing more crashes, we could isolate specifically that version and then dive into its performance either most recently or over time. For devices, we can see the devices themselves, who they're assigned to when you last logged in and any alerts and incidents associated with them. And then all of these alerts that we have been walking through today that we saw, you know, critical alerts on the incident that Amelia was resolving for Martin. All of that is set up here in the DEX administration tab. We choose the applications that we're tracking here. It's very straightforward and user friendly where we can just click on the application. In this case, if we're doing an installed application. We enter the name, publisher, and process name, and then we can choose to track it for metrics and compliance. So now we'll be tracking PowerPoint for all of our end user devices. Metric rules are the alerts that would come up to create push notifications and let end users know that there's an issue. So I'm going to use this uh, device metric rule. As you can see, for a configuration item, we can use SaaS applications, installed applications, and devices. And we can also apply filtering for departments, locations, operating system, or specific users. 
here if I wanted to do operating system is Mac and those are the devices that I want to focus on. We're going to do a critical alert as we saw earlier today that the device memory usage is greater than 95%. All sampled values are within five minutes and then we can go in to create these proactive resolutions. So this proactive resolution or proactive remediation is really where we set those automated resolution similarly to what we did with the live agent with Amelia. Here we're going to be trying to kind of automate that experience. So here we have high memory usage is over 95%. The description is also high memory usage over 95% of the options that we have to either create an incident, uh, proactively provide self-help instructions, or we can provide a URL. In this case, we're going to be creating this remedial action. We're going to clear his cache. There are many out of the box solutions that could be leveraged by him. Once we set what the resolution is going to be, we are going to define the engagement settings. Here we're going to engage the user, but we could silently execute clearing his cache every time it hit 95%. So in order to engage the user, we're going to engage him through virtual agent. Virtual agent has an integration with any of the customer's third party communication channels. We are going to request consent just as Amelia requested consent from Martin earlier as a service desk agent. And she's going to let him know that his memory usage is over 95%. Please confirm okay to clear cash. If this doesn't work, then it's going to create an incident. So with that, we've created a proactive resolution on a metric rule when your memory usage is greater than 95%. And as you can see, that's one metric rule among many that can be set up for your devices, your applications, etc. And all of these metric rules can then be tracked here in the proactive engagement workbench. We have all of the different rules that we have created listed here, including the one we just updated, high memory usage over 95%. To learn more, see our product documentation or knowledge base, or ask a question in the ServiceNow community.